Sunday salutation, folks. We're here, we're primed. It's still the summer, it's still warm, and it's audio who. And this evening, me and these fine bunch of folks have sat and come together to give our take on a big finish audio adaptation of Russell T. Davis's 1990s new virgin novel entitled Damaged Goods. We have the Seventh Doctor, we have Rod and Chris, we have Own Sharks, we have a couple of twin brothers, we have the Tyler family, long before 2005. Yes, and we have the Jerichos. Did the walls come tumbling down? Well, you're about to find out. But before we get to that, well, let's get to this. It's your panel for this evening. I live in the West Coast, it's our Susie. Susie, how goes it? Great. Well, from sunny California. Good Thanks, Sam. Good day, right? Yep. Joining us, convention free for one weekend, it's Mr. Matt Rose. Matt, how's it going? Hello, it's dark, it's tiring, and I'm full of pancakes for my grand today. Oh, that's good to know. You greedy get. And my season, Mr. Will Medina in the building. Will, how goes it? Hey, now, nah, how you doing from New York City? Good, how are you, man? And down in the nutsack, we have Tom Ellis, it's still his neighbour. It's Texas Tim Wells. Timbo? Hello there. Good, how are you, man? And also, finally here, with the novel in hand to give his uh, take on things uh, at a certain point in this cast all the way from good old Springfield it's our old resident library and it's Harry. Harry how goes it? Things are going well today Graham, thank you. Good to have you sir. And of course you all know me so we'll just dispense with the formalities and get on with this. That is good folks. Um, over the last four or five years Big Finish have started to really delve into these novels and put their own spin on them, uh, be they the Virgin novels or be they <clears throat> all BBC past doctor novels. And, you know, a few years back, we got this one. We get damaged goods. Uh, one of the first forays into the, the new series Virgin Adventures. And obviously with, with these books being a bit more adult themed, a few things here and there obviously had to be tweaked for the younger listener. So, what do we think about this? Initial opening thoughts. Um, Susie, can I get your initial opening thoughts, please, on damaged goods? Sylvester McCoy, Travis Oliver, and Yasmin Barrowman. Okay, um, I was uh, I'm new to, to the to the Chris and and uh, and Rosamond crew listener and whatever. Um, they were interesting. I I love the Seventh Doctor. I love uh, I love Sylvester McCoy. He's really really good. He's really awesome in audios. Um, he is in this. He's he's pretty he's pretty incredible. He's got he's got a it's got a timey wimey element to it, but also it's he's got so much uh, he's got so much compassion. I mean, like it's. It's about drug dealing, and it's about uh, it's about you know living in a council estate, and how and how you know all the business of all of your neighbors, and you're you're surrounded by people that you know may it, it even may have nefarious purposes. And then there's like the whole the whole you know twin brothers thing. I can't I can't tell you. It's really emotional. Yeah. It made me cry. It's it's really it's really sad and and uh, and brilliant and like there's the whole the the alien presence was I mean the way it's shown on the cover of it it's just intense. Um, it's just it's a really it's really scary. It's really sad. It's really emotional. It's really rich and i really liked chris and, and rosamond i'm gonna probably pursue some more of their uh of their storylines later and um i'm enjoying uh i enjoyed the seventh doctor and, and his compassion i mean he was great in this so um yeah that's that's my initial opening remarks about it Okay, yeah, uh, just to give you a heads up, uh, thus far that's their only outing with regards to Big Finish, but there's more on the way, we're getting cold fusion, uh, 
in December. So if you want to delve into Ross and Chris, all you have at this present time is the, the Virgin Novel range. Um, Matt, opening thoughts, damn it goods. It's weird. It's like, um, first time I heard this, I had no clue about um, Chris and Ross, other than they were agitators. They were agitators, however you see it. But um, it was wonderful to hear different companions with Sylph. He's always shining. No matter what audio he's doing, he always manages to steal the show. And I have to give hats off for them, because this is like the first ones without Benny, Ross, or even... No, sorry, Benny, Hex, and Ace, not Ross, I've already done. It's great, It's and it just divulged a bit into the Time War, which I don't think was even mentioned in the original novel with that creature. Mm -hmm. but, no. But it was great. Um, so I keep saying it, I just loved it, and the darkness of it. So mm -hmm. really works with all the scripts that are really dark. It really makes his Doctor shine more, mm -hmm. and... When I first heard Russell T. Davis originally wrote it, I was just like, I've always wondered what it'd be like if he wrote for the Doctors of Old, and it showed really well. But it's like a soap, in a way, because you've got people like uh, Denise Black and Michelle Collins from Russell T. Davis' is in a circle of things, because she worked on Doctor Who, Michelle, and Denise Black worked with him on some various projects, including that cucumber thing Philip watched before, and it, just to hear them all on audio, as well as Travis Oliver, Yasmin Bannerman. It's like all of his muscles in a circle here has come together for this one story, nearly. But all in all, it's dark, it's gritty, and Sylve just ste steals the shows and can't wait to hear Original Sin too when that comes out. All right. If you're done promoting, thank you. Um... Harry, can I get your, recent, your opening thoughts on the audio and then your opening thoughts on how the book was? For me, it, the, I've had the book for a long time. Mm. It's only recently I got to listen to the audio. Mm -hmm. I got to admit, the audio was interesting. To see, hear the actual voices of the two companions. I know Sylvester's audio work, I've listened to a little bit before. Sylvester does a pretty good job of audio. Mm -hmm. But... This is the first time I've heard Roz and Chez is on audio, and the people who did them did a pretty good job. What I'll say about the story is this. It's very interesting and very unique. Mm. But as far as full details, I'll hold off on that until a bit later. All I gotta say is this. You're going to, as much as you guys enjoy the, the, the audio, get the book, because the book fills in a lot more details. That's probably the standard procedure. I mean, you know, you, you, you've got two hours to play with your own audio, so you, you can't fit everything in there, I guess. You know. Okay, mate. Uh, Tim, that'll be you, mate. Uh, I enjoyed it very much. This is very good. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's like uh, I'm really happy that Big Finish is doing these uh, adaptations because it, it, it's just a situation where there's stories out there that they can do and they're already there, so why not do them? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And this is a good one. This is a the 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 new adventure range. It was a lot more adult. It was you know basically fan written books where they're trying to be a little more adult, a little more hip, mm -hmm. a little more you know uh, you know current for the '90s. It was. Uh, and this, this is a good example of, of what you can do in that format. I'm glad they toned down some of the stuff, though, from the book, because uh, I, I think that would have just slowed it down, like the mm -hmm. bit that, that you mentioned about um, Chris and um, what's his name? Oh, David, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I, 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 I like the, um, the tone of it, too. It is very dark and very heavy. Mm -hmm. It's like I, I love that there's that twist in the middle when all of a sudden you find out there were twins. I mean, yeah. in other words, that the, the story keeps you in the dark until they let you know what's really going on. I like, I like that a lot. And I like these companions as well. I would, I would hope that um, that Big Finish would just uh, do like a trilogy with, with uh, Roz and Chris, you know, mm -hmm. with the Seventh Doctor, like they normally do. You know what I mean? D separate from the books. You know what I mean? Have the yeah. something new for them to do. 
but yeah, that's I, all I can say is this is a, a success. This is a very successful outing for Big Finish. I like it a lot. Okay, excellent. Well, how about you, Matt? Well, um, unfortunately, um, I'm one of those that never read the book, mm. and I'm trying my best to look for it. But uh, um, what was made me st- well, the first thing that made me confuse me a little bit, I had to get used to it, was the th- the different original um, music theme for the Doctor was that was used for this audio. Yes, that's, I was like, wow, that's weird, and uh, um, and uh, um, you know, getting um, familiarizing with the story because of course. Um, they, you know, they were calling the the drug smile like that. I, I was I was a little bit confused about it too. Later on, I found out it was a uh, an illegal drug, mm-hmm. which in the book, you know, it was cocaine. You know, yeah. mm-hmm. so that's not bad. But um, but that stood out like that. Um, of course, um, like you said, Ross and Chris, um, um, this is their first audio appearance, um, but not not in the book. And luckily, um, later on in the year, um, um, <clears throat> their first appearance is coming out. In the end of the year, original sin. So we could yeah. we could have that one, which is, that was a good beginning. So I, I like I like these characters; they're very good. And like Tim said, these stories, these stories from the Virgin, they are more adult oriented. Yeah. Um, you know, of course, um, we we're not going to um um get like one, maybe once one or two may say a profanity here and there. They didn't say in this audio, but that's 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 what I mean by the adult oriented like that. Mm-hmm. But uh, but the thing is, there's it really spooked me a little bit when uh, the scene in the cemetery. I was, I was like, "Wow!" Like, you know, oh, was, with it. Yeah. yeah, which everybody will see in the cover of the audio or the book. You can see what happened. But that, that really, that really s- s- stood out. But then, I, when then further listening, I find out that this, you could say, weapon, uh, w- the the end form was created by the Time Lords mm-hmm. to, to to fight the vampires. From the last, from the previously um, time war with them. Yep. And then uh, um, you find out that they got activated because of something that's coming up, which we we ourselves would know it would be the the next time war. Mm. That's come. They got activated. And then another thing that stood out was, of course, finding out about the twins, that the doctor who was um, conducting in the the experiments on the sick child. Doctor Gecko. Yeah, that he works. For Torchwood, that was retconned by an ace yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. The, 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 because uh, 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 the, the, in the book it was called the Brotherhood of the Imminent Flesh, something like that. Which um, I think Harry will explain more better about that. The dope of, in the audio, it stood out pretty good having that in there, so that was pretty great. Mm. Um, um, for the more, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll nitpick with some some of the things that happened in the book. Yeah, no, that's great, mate. Thanks, myself. Yeah, I enjoyed this. This was a, this was a great, a great adaptation. Um, even the the subtle changes they made to foreshadow RTD's run on the show some ten years later, and I didn't mind that. I mean, and, unless it was unless the, the things that were replaced were integral to the to any type of plot later on the line in the book range, which I'm not too familiar with, then I, I don't have an issue with that. Um, the two companions, I, I, it's good that we're going to get their. Um, their, their original appearance. Um, I'd, I'd like to see find out more about Roz and Chris. Obviously, the you know Yasmin Barrowman and <clears throat> Tra- Travis Oliver done well in this for the first outing. Oh no, good stuff. And as Matt alluded to, you've got a, you've got a really strong guest cast in this. You know, you had Michelle Collins who was in Forty Two with Dave Tennant, um, at, amongst others. So, and crazy old batshit crazy Mrs. Jericho. Man, she was just driven to the. To, the edge of the abyss by the end of this thing. So much so that bangers and mash went belly up. How can you ruin a traditional British dinner with bangers and mash? I don't know. But anyway, yeah. Oh no, solid cast, solid outing. And a nice adaptation of RTD's one-shot uh, novel for the Virgin Range. Um, any events, characters, or instances within the story, book or audio, that stood out for you? Um, Harry? One, one thing I will mention in this book is that RTD in the book, compared to the audio, there was no Torchwood. You have mentioned that. Yeah. Unit was involved in this whole mess because at the end of the book, there are a series of archival appendices. 
Mm -hmm. and they relate to unit operations, unit things are going on. So Torchwood was not, when RTD wrote the book, Torchwood was not even in anywhere near being thought of at this time. Torchwood came along later, but in the book, it's unit that takes care of the, you know, the kid and other people who managed to survive what happened. Records are kept to them for years before they're eventually sealed by unit. Mm -hmm. That's one big change in the book. As much as I enjoyed the, the, the audio, you get a lot more depth and a lot more information with the book. For example, in the book, there's no mention of a name for this cocaine. It's not called Smiler. They just simply called it's just a form of cocaine. Mm. The waveform that triggered the vampire stuff is mentioned. It comes from a section of another planet, but it's so intelligent, so diverse that the doctor can't even try. I mean, I won't go into all the details with the book, but I just say this. The audio's good. The book gives you a lot more depth and detail that you wouldn't get because you only get two hours for audio. Mm -hmm. If you really want to see the teeth in this, it is a good book by Russell Davis. I do own the book. It's part, I've got all the new adventure books except for the last, very last one at the Lung Barrel. And I have to say this. If you enjoy the, the audio, get the book because you're really going to find a lot more depth, a lot more detail. This one time, the doctor even admits Something's going on with his gameplay that is a lot more urgent than normal. Okay, there you go, guys. Buy the book if you can get it at a decent price. Uh, well, hope you understand it. The, the, the funny thing, um, um, like you said about that, the the the, the wife mm. who who claims that she received damaged goods. Yeah. Yeah. You know, She's a really nutter in, in the audio, man. I'm like, wow. I know, I know in the novel, um, she did more damage, so to speak, to certain people that it was that we heard in the audio. Yeah. But I'm not worried about that. But uh, but the thing is, if if she would have listened, if she would have listened to her husband when they were when uh, they were trying to get a, a child, mm. she she would have uh, um, she would have ended up having a different child. But he, but she was such a, how what's the word for it? Um, racist. Yeah, you can say racist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Nationalist, racist like that because she wanted she wanted pure purely from London like yeah, that. Purely English, yes. yeah. Yeah, purely English. You had and, to buy British. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know she she you know she she got into this scenario. But uh, here's a funny question um about the twins. Hmm. Um, how, uh, how they how them um, does it say in the book so so to speak um how come how they their powers came to be like that? Harry? I really couldn't, as I said, the, I got about half, it would happen three quarters of the way through the book again the second time. Mm. It's been a while I read it, but they did say a lot of references, very stuff. Sylvester's doctor does mention, as I said, well, it is a game that somebody's been watching for a while through different sources. Things, some things are coming up about in this indicate the things are a lot more urgent than he would have done in the past because they're coming up to him a lot sooner than he normally would, so. All right. I think he actually mentioned that when they, they initially went into the flat and the audio as well. He mentioned that things seemed rushed. Um, as for your question, well, I don't know. Um, no, but I remember that because um, their, their power was... was why activated the um the end form mm -hmm. end form so i'm yeah. saying uh was it was it like an ex was the mom when she was pregnant was something was experimented on or maybe it was a gene or something like that that brought out that brought out that power like that no sure. considering considering um she went with mom before um she had the kids um her husband already left her like that like uh, it, was he really the father of them or something like that well, that, that, that was, that's what that was <clears throat> question popped in my head. Well, yeah. maybe if they talk nicely, RTD will pick up on that in a prequel. Yeah, it'd be funny to go back and check on this, uh, maybe in the audio sequel to it. That'd be cool. Mm. All right, mate. Right now, is that you? Yeah. I'll tell you guys a yes. Okay, all right. Uh, Temple, how are you, mate? 
Well, the, the score on this is very filmic. It sounds like you're listening to a movie. Yeah. It's, it's really well done. Um, there's, there's something that I, that, that I find kind of disturbing, though, and this is, this is, I think, part of the attention of the book range. They, whenever they carried on the story from the TV series, they made the doctor even more manipulative throughout yeah. the book series. He becomes even more and more power crazed or whatever. And that's, that's why eventually Ace pretty much tells him to fuck off. Mm. And, uh, but uh, one thing I don't like really with the story is because they show him being so manipulative throughout. Like he sets things up, puts them on a list so they can get a flat in the same council and all that stuff because he knows what's going on. Uh, but then how come he, how come he, he doesn't really win at the end? Because all those people die. I mean, thousands of Londoners get killed in this. I mean, or people, on, you know, we don't see them, but we hear them getting killed and shit. And it's like, uh, you know, if you're going to be that manipulative that you're going to get this thing all sorted out, why can't you see that coming ahead of time? The one of their ones. I mean, it's, that's, what, what was they all saying? That's the tr that's trouble with time travel. Yeah, uh. yeah I mean, it, it's happened in other stories as well, and it's not just this doctor. But, I mean, I think that I think that was where they were going with the book range, saying, look how crazy this guy is getting, because he doesn't, I mean, he, he, he gets out of the story on the seat of his pants, mm -hmm. and he gets away with his buddies, but what, what did they actually accomplish? I mean, uh, I mean, I'm not taking anything away from the story though, because it's still a very good story. I mean, and I, I love the twists in it too. Like, like, like I said earlier about the, you know, the twins. You don't find that halfway through. All of a sudden, boom, boom. There's twins, and then when that that crazy woman murders a, just slowly murders her husband with poison at dinner, mm. you know, and she intends to kill herself as well, and then she changes her mind because she's gone even more crazy. It's just it's full of uh, twists like that, which you don't really see coming. So. No. I, it's really enjoyable. I just wonder why it's okay for the doctor to let all those people die. <laughs> so, think of that with Jewel. Well, like you say, it's, it's not only Doctor that has happened to you. That Davidson TV story where everybody basically yeah. copped it and Tegan went apes it and, uh, you know, um, but as I say, I mean, in a, in a sense, I agree with you. What, what did he accomplish at the end of the day? Except basically complete the, the loop, the time loop, whereby uh, the the daughter saw him in the alleyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? Fair point, Tim. Right. But there you go. That's Sly's doctor, I guess. Uh, Matt, anything for you? Uh, that's been covered a lot. Mrs. Jericho, back crazy. I loved it when she was just claiming that boy was hers throughout half the story. Just part of a bigger twist. Not mm. his fruitcake. And I love crazy characters when pulled off well. Also, I also loved um, Chris and Ross just on their first outing. Nice to welcome another addition to the TARDIS crew. They're, they're old from the books. Nice to hear their audio debut. But it's a solid story, and she just stood out for me the most. The crazy lady who nearly killed everybody. Okay. These days we call that Michelle Gomez. Um, Sue, how about you? I liked... Uh how the I liked how Chris and Rob's were 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 um were making their uh making their points with the doctor and stuff and then how uh, how he would listen to them and stuff and and the other thing that was really uh it was hard it was hard to like imagine you know the 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 child switch that they're talking about i mean anybody who can't bond with their own kid that they've adopted like years and years and years ago i mean whatever mm. yeah it was it was hard to so so sad to to listen to that you know cuz these are you know these are kids they're not they're not you know they're not aliens. They may have an alien form in them, but they they honestly were were they were kids and oh so sad. Anyway and the, so, the thing is the, the 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 one that was in the hospital and sick, you could say that he was more of a kid because his brother was becoming a little bit of a manipulator because he was making people like give him a ride or yeah. or give him things without him asking that he's hungry or thirsty like that. Yeah, there were kids though. Well, he had a glamour, and the thing yeah. is, he was—he um, was part of the same creature. I mean, uh, she said they were a, a gestalt. So that means that you know, 
they weren't they were never really two people I, I guess he was drawing power from the brother which which was making him ill but <clears> by the end they become one thing like a vampire yeah yeah so yeah and the the return of the vampires from uh from State of Decay was really cool. I liked the the the. the well, it was just a reference, but fifth way. You know. ref, reference and and Easter eggs and all of the the conversation about that that okay. um, was was awfully fun. And I've loved I love vampire stories, but this one was sad and not just in an emo sort of goth girl kind of way. It's mm-hmm. like a really sad story about kids and and I, it's just. It broke Susie's heart. Oh, well, some people interact and, and take things differently. That's Sue's point of view. Do you agree with her? Leave some comments if you do. Um, Marcel, for me, I, I, it was really didn't the, the personality. I agree with Tim to a degree. It was about the, the, the personality, a slice doctor in this. I mean, that, that scene in the office we. Um, Dr. Greco, you know, he's banging it in the table, I'm talking, you know, just, uh, you get the whole interrogation, the talks with thing comes up, and then says, excuse me, I've got to tie you, get, tie you up against a chair. Ooh, very manipulative there, that little sly Scotsman, I must admit. Um, Chris and Ross, as Matt alluded to, great addition. Um, although, I, I do, to a certain degree, feel a wee bit sorry for Chris and the story, because he spent three quarters of the story, more or less, uh, in a drug mule, looking for some smile. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, he, you know, he's got he's got David hitting on him in, on one corner, and he's got to go find this smile slash cocaine in another corner. You know, great, great companion work, great detective work. And by the end, he still hadn't he, you know achieved his task. He never got any smile. Oh dear, huh. some brownie points knocked off for you right there. Um, Jasmine Barman is Rose. Yeah, she sounds like a you know a strong and well-rounded character. Um, obviously, if you've read the books, you know what happens to her way around in the road, but it'll be interesting to get a mare rounded and fleshed to um, run with her in the audio as the months go by. Um, Michelle Collins is the other suffering Winnie Tyler. Yes, we have a, a mention of the Tyler family post, uh, pre-2005 rather, and uh, it's foreshadowing a lot of the whole... Um, RTD stuff, which is yet to come. She was good in this, and you know, she, she, she's, good. she's generally good in a lot of the stuff she's in. She was good in 42 with Dave Tennant, and she was good in this as well. So, I don't know, good stuff. And, uh, you know, as I say, for, a, for an adaptation of a novel for, for the mid 90s, cannot complain. Oh no, top notch job by Nick Craig. Who the hell is Nick Craig? Nick Briggs and the crew at Big Finish Tales. Right, guys, open mic portion of the podcast. Anything else you wish to bring up regarding this audio? Well, I do like the way that, I'm sorry, I do like the way that uh, Roz calls the doctor out on it as well. Mm-hmm. She tells him, look, look, you're like nothing to you. You just use us. You're just, you know, you ask us to run favors and do jobs for you and stuff, and it's all a plan that you don't tell us anything about. Yeah. And that's, like I said, I think that's where the books were going with his character, which is, is quite a bit different from what, where he ended up on television, yeah. I think. Would you agree with that? They were they were going a, a bit down the road of the manipulative element with the seventh doctor in the book range. They did a great job with Sylvester's doctor in this both the book in the book, and they really brought it to life with the audio. I mean, it's one time I gotta admit they got Sylvester down right. The game playing doctor this time forced to do things he doesn't like to do because there's things going on there beyond his control. In fact. The next book in the series, after Damage Goods, explains that this whole thing was actually created by one of the schools on Gallifrey. Mm. Here's the question, um, says, um, even though this is book 55 of the, of the New Avengers, doing, doing the whole series of the New Avengers, um, was the Seventh Doctor becoming more manipulative to, to, in, every, in every story, like a chess player, always making moves left and right, and um, and uh, you could say um, you could say um, tricking his companions to do certain things. Not always. It some of the latter books actually, the Doctor is not so much being manipulative, but he's actually one who's being coming in 
to help save his companions because of things that they've done, mm. things that they come into situations where they've got no choice but to call him in. In fact, the last book I've got, Lung Barrel, oh, I wish to heaven they would do Lung Barrels in audio because Lung Barrel explains so much of what's going on with the seventh doctor. Here, it, that is that Gallifrey, as I said, just, if they ever, if you get, let's get, if they ever do audio on Lung Barrel, get it because it's going to be great. If you can't get the audio, get the book because the book, that book, that book is going for over, over, over 100 bucks. All right, all right. Uh, I, I, I hate to break it to you, Harry, but I doubt there's a snowball chance in hell they'll ever do on Barrel. I know. Yeah. That's the place where I've heard. Yeah. yeah, that one, that one, that one's a little bit hard, but it deals with the other and uh, the uh, the wife and all that nonsense. Yeah. That's, that's, that's gonna be weird. Hmm. All right. Um. Anything else, guys? Before we get a spring rated and in the can. No, I can't think of nothing. No. Ma. Sue. Sad. Done. All right. It's that time again. A uh, host to find his illegitimate kids. <laughs> Don't scare me, man. I've not got enough money to pay our money. Damaged goods. Quite for a nice novel adaptation range. Sylvester McCoy, <clears throat> Travis Oliver, and Yasmin Barman. Susie, what do you give us a little bit out of 10? Well, I give it a really sad 9 out of 10. Okay, thank you. Tim, let's just go down to go, mate. I'm going to give it a 10. Oh. It's very good. It's okay. very, yeah. it, it's, I can't find any fault with it. It's a very good story, very well done, very mm. well told. And it keeps you, I mean, this is the third time I've listened to it, and it still surprises me when, you, when it surprises me. I'll be like, oh, shit, I forgot about that. You know what I mean? So I give it a 10. 10 out of 10 from Techie Co. Excellent. Matt Rose, what's of you from your way? Well, for a solid cast, done by one of my favorite writers it's definitely got to be a 10 for sills manipulative nature wow what a manipulative motherfucker isn't me 10 out of 10 again there you go and nyc's own mr will medina well what's the view of an nyc way man i got a um the cast was a great cast the story's pretty creepy and great story i'm gonna give it a nine out of ten and i can't wait for big finish to do more from the new avengers stories but that's yes. some good story i can't wait for them to do an audio of. We're getting our next two in December, and we look forward to that. Okay, Harry, feel free to give the audio a rating, and then by all means, do your stuff and rate the books, up. Huh? Audio, i got to give it a 10. It is superb. It catches the full feel of this time period. I mean, we're getting toward the end of the, big, the new adventure books. Mm. It's well done. It really gives you the feel on the audio. I give it a 10. The book, I bought it when it first came out. Still in great shape in my collection. Book also a ten. If you don't, if you can't get the audio, get the book. If you can find it, because you're not going to be disappointed. Believe me. Between the two, you're going to have some great stuff to listen and read. There you go. Buy the book. Obtain the audio. What the hell they beef? Compare the two. It's all good, and it's no damage. And for me, I'll settle on a nine. Absolutely solid outing. Um, and, and I kind of wait to hear more with Chris and Rods come December with uh, Cold Fusion. Although, if I remember correctly, that, or, or is that Original Sin? Whatever one it is. Go original come. Sin, um, Original Sin first. All right, all right. Original Cold Sin, Fusion. yes. So, Cold Fusion is the fifth Doctor story that they so Oh, uh, uh, yes. My mistake, dearies. So there you go. Original Sin come December. We we'll look forward to it. Well, guys, done dusted in the can. And uh, Philip White for the second week in a row. That schmuck. Um, join us next week, folks, when we'll be sitting down and tackling one of Big Fancy's latest releases, where we have Peter Davison encountering the Weeping Angels alongside Michelangelo, played by, you know, uh, Matthew Kelly, and Owen Angels. So we look forward to sitting down and tackling that one. 
and we'll see how you go. Can I, at this time, guys, thank the panel for joining me here this evening. Harry, thanks for sitting with us. We'll be in touch next time we have another one to go. Um, please feel free to like, share, subscribe, leave some comments, and check out our other buddies on YouTube. We have the, the guys over at Geeks Assembled. We have Dr. Sue, the manager of Mega Files, and his daily news broadcast. We have Sue there with Tabs Blues Radio. We have Matt Rose. Go check him out on Twitter. You'll see how much of a stalker he truly is. Um, Boy. We also... <laughs> <laughs> it is the truth. Yeah, I'm only, I'm only yanking your chain, Matt. And we also have, um, you know, uh, Jason, we have Lady Neal, we have Johnny Blues, we have Sammy Carter. There's a whole host of people, you know, who we sit and, you know, interact with who are all worth a, a good old thumbs up. Please go check them out and give them a like. As always, guys, we wish you all a safe and prosperous week and be excellent to yourself and each other. And we'll see you next time when the angels are back in town. Peace. Adios.